Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial video here on Simple Takeoffs. Today we're going to be going over how to sign up for the Virtual Air Traffic Simulation Network, VATSIM, and exactly all the steps to follow in order to get us from having no account or anything uh, to a point where we're able to fly the aircraft on the network. As always, if you like this video and if you found it useful, I do ask that you click the like button and you subscribe to the channel for a lot more tutorial videos coming up. To get us started, we're going to go over to our browser and type VATSIM and click on the first search result that comes up. And this is going to be the main landing page that will come back to quite often on this tutorial. Now on the landing page under pilots, let's click on getting started. And once you do that, you find yourself on this page that lays out the steps to follow to get on the network. I've picked out the important steps because I don't think we need to get into details uh, on every single one. So here I'm going to go through the critical ones to get us basically from no account uh, to a point where we can fly on the network. And these steps are to join VATSIM, obviously create an account. We're going to go through how to choose a pilot client and we're going to prepare our simulator in terms of launching at an appropriate location uh, to connect to VATSIM and also we're going to file our flight plan on VATSIM and we're going to connect to VATSIM and we're going to have a bunch of bonus tips that I'll go through uh, if you stick around to the end of the video. Now, under the getting started page, let's click on join VATSIM here. That will take you to this page and under the register section, click on the sign up page. And you'll be transported over to this form where you need to enter all your information to register. Now one thing I want to point out is that some policy requires your full name and your real, uh, real legal name first and last. So if you're thinking of putting, you know, Frog McDonald, uh, I don't think that's going to work. Now remember those bonus tips I mentioned? Here's one of them. Basically, VATSIM tracks you by your uh, IP address. So if you try anything funky, if you break any rules while flying on the network, uh, don't bother trying to make another account because they ban your IP address and not your actual account only. So I suggest to follow all the rules, basically have fun. They have a lot of tolerance for you know, people that have a learning curve to go through and you don't have to be an expert to be on VATSIM. By all means, this is not to make you nervous, but uh, in terms of, you know, traffic separation and following the clearance and following the uh, different uh, instructions given by air traffic control, please make sure you remain professional. Now, once you fill out the registration form and submit, go to your email address that you used in your registration form and you should find a uh, verification email from VATSIM. Make sure you check your junk mail if it's not in your inbox and open it up, click on verify, and you'll basically be uh, transported over to the landing page. And uh, this is the main home page for your VATSIM profile. Take some time to go through all the different links on the left and familiarize, familiarize yourself uh, with the content. Now there is a mandatory exam to pass. Uh, it's not very hard as long as you know the basics of aviation. Uh, that I will leave up to you to do on your own time. But in order to access the exam, go on the left here. Click on my exams and you should see this mandatory exam under your assigned exams. Now for me, since I've already taken it and passed it, it's uh, obviously appearing under taken exams. but. In either case, if you click on view, you should be able to uh, start your exam, which is multiple choice. Here you can see the results of my exam. I got one question wrong. Uh, fun, fun fact, uh, there's no response required to uh, ATC telling you to stand by. You just remain silent. But essentially, these are 15 multiple choice questions that test the basic knowledge uh, for being able to navigate the ground and, and, and the air uh, in a way that will not cause any uh, you know, annoyance or issues to other pilots and while still being able to accommodate a little bit of a learning curve that I'm sure 
you you will have when you first uh, start to uh, get into VATSIM. Now, as a bonus tip, since you've all been great sports and uh, stuck around so far, uh, this, the same general structure applies to all your communications with ATC, no matter if you're on the ground and you, know, you want to get IFR clearance or if you're ready for taxi or if you're lined up at the runway ready for departure or if you're in the air or if you're ready for descent, you always start with your aircraft and your registration type. Uh, you ask for your request, you state your request, and once your, your instruction is received from air traffic control, you basically read it back. So that's the same kind of structure that is always followed no matter what you're doing. So for example, if I am at the gate and you know I have uh, ADIS Information Charlie, which is their automated terminal information service giving you your weather uh, before you get your IFR clearance. I, I would say, for example, you know, Los Angeles clearance, Air Canada 2408, uh, gate 24, with information Charlie, request clearance to San Diego. And, uh, you know, ATC will come back and, you know, we'll get back, we'll uh, get into more details about clearance later. But, for example, if I'm arriving into Los Angeles, I'll call up air traffic control and I'll say something like, so Cal Approach, good evening, Air Canada 2408, descending 10,000 for 7,000 with information X-ray. And they'll come back and say uh, something like, Air Canada 2408, So Cal Approach, good evening, descend and maintain 2,000. And you'll just have to repeat that instruction, say, descend and maintain 2,000, Air Canada 2408. And always include your call sign at the end of the transmission. And so without getting into too much details uh, about your interaction with air traffic control, that's the general approach you'll want to take. Now the next step is to choose an appropriate pilot client, which basically allows communication back and forth between your simulator and VATSIM. And to do that, we'll go back on the landing page here and under pilots, we'll go to pilot clients. And the basic gist of it guys is if you're using Microsoft Flight Simulator, you're gonna to wanna to download vPilot. And if you're using X-Plane, X-Pilot. This table though, uh, helps you sort that out in more detail. To get vPilot, just click literally right here and click on download and install it. And to get xPilot, you do the same. Now, once you've downloaded it, open up, uh, in my case, this is vPilot. Go to your settings and make sure your audio and push to talk settings are uh, all connected cor correctly. Your inputs for your mic and your speaker. Otherwise, you won't be able to talk to ATC. Now, the next step, prepare your simulator and flight plan. Uh, for your flight plan, we're gonna go to SimBrief, as we always do. We're gonna go over to our browser, click SimBrief, go to Dispatch, My Flight Plan, open up a new flight. Now, uh, I've set one up from Los Angeles to Denver. We're gonna go Generate. We're gonna obviously review our uh, flight plan details like the responsible pilots that we all are. And then here's the important part at the bottom here to basically file your flight plan on VATSIM. Click on pre-file on the row that's uh, labeled VATSIM and it'll bring you back to your dashboard and this is where you can file it, make sure all the details are correct. And the airport codes are per ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization codes, not IATA. And once you click File, go over to your simulator, click uh, Live Traffic. And I wanted to make sure I highlight at this point, that's very important, do not launch on an active runway uh, or any taxiway in, in VATSIM, if you're using VATSIM. So make sure you select an appropriate gate or stand where you can uh, enter the aircraft in a cold and dark state and, uh, and uh, begin setting things up that way and get your IFR clearance from uh, air traffic control. And uh, it could be VF, you could be flying VFR and GA, it doesn't matter, in general aviation, either case, you're not gonna wanna enter on, on an active runway. Always launch at the gate or stand. So here I am uh, in LAX, I'm going to give it some battery power and now I'm ready to basically connect to VATSIM and uh, look for what frequency to, um, to contact.
in order to know which ATC unit is online, there's a bunch of tools, and obviously we're going to need to connect to VATSIM. To, to know what ATC uh, unit is online in your area, under the landing page, go back to pilots, go to resources, and uh, I use VATSPY, but you can use VATTASTIC. There's a bunch of different softwares and websites. I find VATSPY to work just fine, and you know it shows clearly the highlighted areas that have air traffic control in live time. So in my case right now, you can see Los Angeles, uh, California does not. But that's a pretty good software. You feel free to read through this and, and choose your own. And uh, I can now open up uh, vPilot again, put my call sign and my type code for my aircraft, which is my which is an A320neo and Air Canada 248, and click connect, and there you go. Now you're connected through your pilot client to VATSIM, guys. And uh, in general, uh, very quickly, there's a top-down approach in VATSIM. You can read more about it, but uh, basically it's, it, it goes, you know, um, clearance delivery, ground, tower, approach, and center. Uh, center can do approach, tower, grounds work, but it can't be the other way around. So if you see center is online, you can use them for all your services you would need from, you know, taxi to, to your in-flight, but you cannot do that. on the, Like if ground is online, you can't use them for tower or approach or center services and um, uh, there's a very general structure to receiving your uh, instrument flight rules IFR clearance and it always uh, follows this craft sort of acronym which is uh, where you're cleared to what route you're taking what altitude the initial altitude that they uh, clear you to climb uh, the, f the departure frequency you're gonna need to contact uh, upon takeoff and obviously your squat code so that's the craft uh, kind of like rule of thumb craft acronym you can use and I'll also link in the description the official uh, radio sort of uh, communications guide that I'm using to study for my radio license in Canada. Obviously there's going to be European counterparts to this and uh, American version but this is the one I'm using so I'll link it in the description. And as always if you found this uh, useful don't forget to give, uh, give me a like and a subscribe guys. Appreciate your time. Thank you. I hope you found this useful.